get notifications, and stay updated every time I post a challenge podcast by hitting the subscribe button. Thank you all, and hope you enjoy. What's going on, everybody? My guest joining me today, she's from the real world St. Thomas. Laura, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thanks uh, for joining me. How, uh, how have you been? Hanging in there? I've been good. Um, it's kind of been a crazy year just in general, and then we're building a house on top of that. So this year is just flying by, and you know I'm ready for Christmas and starting the next year and just keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's actually crazy how um, much time's like flew by. We're already like at the uh, latter end of August, and uh, oh, you know, it feels like uh, 2020 just started. I know. It, I mean, I feel like summer you blinked because it went straight from spring break for kids, and then all of a sudden it's the end of summer. So it's just a long spring break, and I'm ready for summer again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. But, um, you know, we're obviously going to get into the, uh, you know, questions that everyone loves to hear, which is challenge related yeah. stuff. But, you know, we'll talk about your real world first. Something I always uh, ask my guests in the very start of it is kind of their casting process slash story, if you will. Could you maybe talk to me about, you know, your story and how it uh, all came about for you with the real world? Yeah. So I actually never I hadn't really watched the real world before I applied. Um, growing up, I didn't have cable in the house. So I, I mean, I had heard about it, but I'd never really watched it. And one day after work, I was sitting on the couch and flipping through channels. Well, I haven't really watched this before. So I turned on real world and it was Vegas this season that that'd be kind of fun. I had watched the challenge and I thought the challenge looked fun. So I figured you have to be on the real world before the challenge. And so I figured, yeah, might as well give it a shot. So I sent in, I don't know, a paragraph about this long, just about myself. And that would have been for San Diego's season. And when I didn't hear anything back, I didn't think anything of it. I was just, oh, okay, whatever. And then they hit me up in August. So I sent my video probably in March. And then I got a message in August. My first video chat was shortly after that and let's see so video chat and then I had an in-person um, interview in Iowa and after that I thought oh that went terrible they're clearly not going to like me after that interview and I got the next call that said hey you're going to New York so okay you know pack my bags go to New York I thought that one was a bust as well and in January, it was just kind of a slow process, but then in January, they let us know, hey, you're on the show, you're on the cast, and then they told us where we were going, and St. Thomas, and February, we were on a plane and headed down south, so it was easy, it was fun, but I thought I was out every single interview that I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that kind of seems to be like the, the uh, consensus, like, Normally, it seems as though unless you're like, you know, super, you know, confident, it seems like more than likely you're expecting the worst when, uh, you know, auditioning from at least from what I've heard from the you know people that I've, you know, asked their stories from. But you mentioned uh, St. Thomas. I've had Latoya and Trey both on here and we kind of talked about, uh, in depthly about, um, you know, the location where you guys are be staying and kind of the overall experience, obviously, you know, beautiful place, but in, in the setting of filming a TV show, so to speak, maybe being stuck on, like, I guess you could call it an Island, um, for a real world season, isn't exactly, um, maybe going to produce the best TV in the sense of, you know, maybe, um, more drama and stuff like that because you've seen in traditional real world seasons, you know, they've got like the bars and the clubs and stuff are like within walking distance. And then you guys were kind of had to be, uh, you know, go by boat everywhere. And I've heard that like the boats and stuff like broke down. Could you maybe, uh, maybe provide some insight on um, maybe your expectations and thoughts going into St. Thomas, like with living there, going into it. And then after the fact, yeah, so going into it, I thought, you know, 
St. Thomas, I've never been there. I don't think any of us in our house knew exactly where the Virgin Islands were. So we all had to Google that. But once I, you know, once I found out where it was at, I got really excited. Like, oh, we're going somewhere warm. Perfect. I want to get out of Nebraska. It's February. And we got down there the first night. You know, it was great because we were all just getting to know each other at the house. And then time went on. You want to go do something. Okay. Well, you have to call them on what they called the bat phone. Give them a half hour. Like, hey, in half an hour, I'd like to go to this store or I'd like to go to the grocery store. You have to wait that half hour and then they get the boats ready. And then it was like a 45 minute boat ride going 15 miles an hour all the way to St. Thomas. So, I mean, it was being on the island part of it, the nice weather, that was great. But otherwise, really not a good location. Transportation wise, the uh, big party area was on the other side of the island, which we had to pay a $20 cab ride to that side of the island and back a piece. Um, so the weird thing was you take a cab by yourself and it's $20 to get there. If you take a cab with three other people, it's $20 each person to get there. And then back, so we were broke, just trying to go to the other side just to hang out with people once or twice in a month. So yeah, I, I mean, gorgeous place, just not really what I was hoping for, but Looking back, you know, when we got there, I told everybody I was really hoping for Miami. Miami would have been so much fun. There's so much to do, tons of beaches. You got the warm weather, but the nightlife is insane in Miami. So we missed out on that part of it. Mm, right. But um, <laughs> I want to ask you now, because I, I just mentioned LaToya, and I know Marie is obviously like maybe kind of a big figure in like the whole like Twitter world <laughs> with like fans and whatnot. Why do you feel like uh, maybe you and uh, you were kind of like maybe on the outskirts with them on your real world season? And because it was kind of seemed like it was, you know, Toy and Marie versus everybody, sort of. So while we were actually in the house, I've always gotten along a lot better with guys than girls. Um, I just don't really like all the catty drama and whatnot. And Marie and Toya, they're great. But in the house, they would go, they would just be two peas in a pot and gang up on people, especially Swift. Now, I love Swift. He had some of the things coming for him, but things like they were burning his things. They tried to push him off of a boat, like just calling people. Okay, you can call people names, but when you're really digging down and trying really hard just to get under somebody's skin over and over and over and over. For a couple months straight, it really starts to eat at you. And Swift wanted nothing to do with being in the house. Um, I don't know. The uh, just the cattiness and the it I, it just didn't fly well with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I could uh, you know see it, but maybe talk to me now about your feelings heading on to the challenge because obviously you mentioned knowing about it did you have aspirations for getting onto it I that's the whole reason I wanted to do real world is just to get on the challenge I've always loved athletics I love competing against people um the challenge itself being there it was a little different than I imagined um I was excited to meet everybody and participate but it was more of like a I mean, you got to play the game at the same time, but it was more of a popularity contest and becoming friends with all these people. And there's some people that their personalities and I just kind of clashed with. And sorry, you're like the top of this alliance and I'm not really your kind of friend. So I'm just going to go over this way. But it was, we also, and they didn't show this, um, Trey and I, we made sure that we paired up with this side. And then Marie and Rob were on this side and we were working together and it doesn't show that, which kind of stinks because we were trying to make it seem like, oh, Marie and Rob, we want nothing to do with them. We hate them, like kind of thing. But really, we were all working together, but trying to be secretive about it and not letting them know like, oh, yeah, we're really close with each other. We just don't want you to know that kind of thing. So 
it would have been nice if they kind of showed what our plan was instead of just, oh, St. Thomas, you've got this side and this side, and that's it. So that wow. didn't work out very well. That's, that's an interesting, uh, you know, perspective to hear you say that because the way the edit kind of seemed was though kind of made it seem like Marie and Trey were at each other's throats on opposite ends and then they kind of just like I mean no offense to you guys obviously but they kind of made you guys out to be like the dumb rookies in a way I know I know I mean I get it we're rookies they don't really expect much of us anyways they expect you to come for a few seasons then you're finally doing well in the challenges but I think we actually probably would have made it far if it wasn't for the stupid fish fight and egg toss. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, the whole rookie thing, though, it surprised me to see that maybe you guys were edited that way or treated as though, because honestly, most of the teams there were rookies with the exception of a few. Yeah, yeah, because San Diego, they hadn't even released a challenge since they came out, because I think they were filming the previous <laughs> while they were filming their show. Yeah. So. Another thing too was, um, you guys uh, only had about what was it like a week or a week and a half, two weeks before mm-hmm. coming on to the challenge after filming everything, right? Yeah, it was three weeks, and I think the thing that think the thing that stinks for us is that we didn't have the opportunity like the other shows to be able to watch ourselves on TV. I think we would have, well personally, I would have learned a lot (laughs) and um, probably changed things up a little more and things would have been different. That's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Because without, uh, without, um, you know, seeing things play out, you're kind of going into this thing, uh, you know, blind in a way, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, whereas like all the other teams kind of got the opportunity to, um, you know, kind of if I could use an analogy, it's similar to like an off season for like a like a sports season. Like you know, you go back and watch like what you you know did the pre- prior season and uh, try to better from that. Whereas you guys kind of just one two like right after each other. So mm-hmm. well, and if you think about it, we were in a house for two and a half months, and by the end of it, you're just kind of like, this was fun, but I'm ready to go home. <laughs> and we went home and went left right away. So. We didn't really have that time to just kind of recuperate and get our heads in the game and kind of hurt us in the long run. So, <laughs> yeah. But um, when I had Trey on here, I spoke in depth about his uh, kind of rivalry he had with Zach that actually ended up leading to them kind of being paired up on the next show, which was Rivals, too. But um, who, who did maybe you, I guess you could say, resonate with? Um, you know, on the season, and maybe if anybody not. That's okay. So I actually really liked Devin. I talked to her a lot. We were bunkmates, and so we would talk all the time. Um, there were a lot of people. So when we were trying to keep our distance from Rob and Marie, I didn't really get close with a lot of those people. Some of the people I just knew I wouldn't click with. Um, but I, Ashley Kelsey, I always liked her. And then we actually hung out when I went back to San Diego. I wasn't close with Frank in the house, but I got to know Frank afterwards as well as Knight. So there are friendships that I didn't build there while we were filming, but they were all afterwards. Um, there were definite people that I did not like, like Cara Maria. I could not stand her. And so I was so happy that she was gone right away. (laughs) Um, But also Wes. Wes was one that I got along with right away as well. Wow. That's that's interesting because he kind of uh, got thrown out right away, it seemed like. Mm -hmm. He did. Everybody band together just to get him out. Well, it was easy to, it wasn't just gunning for Wes. Um, Well, yeah, a lot of people were gunning for Wes. But they were also kind of an easy target because they were so much older. And, I mean, all the seasons, they were newer seasons. So they didn't have that strong relationship with them. And then uh, what season, What I can't remember what team it was that Carl was on. Fresh Meat. Fresh Meat, yes. So 
they came in because one of the other teams got sent home before we even started filming. So they were a super easy target because they weren't there originally with everybody else. So a couple of those were really nice to just kick to the curb, make it easy to stay around for a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, that's okay. I was just gonna say, yeah, Wes, surprisingly, in person, he's a great guy. He just, he has his game that he plays and it works for him. So that's great. But I feel like he's a completely different person outside of the house. So, yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But now I want to talk about the uh, elimination um, with uh, you and Trey when you guys faced Nani and Dustin. What kind of uh, what kind of went wrong? Because it seemed like you guys were kind of uh, winning it at first, at least from what it looked like on TV. So, yes, we did really well. I think. Trey, he likes to control certain situations and he wanted to control that. He didn't want to take any of my ideas of, I wanted to tie really tight knots. Like I would have climbed to the top, made knots and like hung down from them and made them as tight as possible because there'd, no, there'd be no way that they'd be able to get those undone. And he didn't like that idea. And then he started to gas out. So we started slowing down, slowing down. And I started yelling at him during the elimination, which of course doesn't get shown. But um, I think just Nani and Dustin, they just had a better endurance team than Trey and I did. And just they knocked it out of the park. So they were able to catch up and take the win on that one. Yeah, it's also interesting as well, because um, uh, that was actually the first season that they had that elimination. And now that you guys were like one of the first to play it. Now, like they just had it on this past season, the seasons mm -hmm. before, like it's become a staple of it. And um, I have like an after show sort of after the elimin the episode where they had the elimination this season. And Dustin was actually on here. I've had him on here a couple of times and okay. he spoke in depth about it. Um, he actually said like that. And you could probably even attest to it as well being there um, without Sarah and Alton, like kind of guiding them as well. They had mm -hmm. that. They were kind of being coached by uh, Sarah and now Alton from the side, telling them like where to go and stuff as well. So I guess that was kind of, uh, you know, going in their favor too. Yeah, we didn't really have that. It was more of a, come on, Laura, come on, Trey, no, no. Like that's about all we got. <laughs> Just screaming at us. That didn't. It was not helpful whatsoever. But I mean, at the same time, your endurance is just pumping. So to be able to try and take what everybody from the side that's 30 feet away, what they're yelling at you over 20 voices and being able to use that. I mean, it's, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I am glad that we had the one we did instead of what they did on this previous season, this last one, because the car did not look very fun. We would have done really well because Dustin is length. He's tall and Trey's not. So we Trey could have probably slithered through there like a snake easily just because he's so, so short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, we'll get into that later, but it's interesting that I, uh, you kind of answered one of my later questions for me with, uh, you know, talking about the car because uh -oh. I, but we'll get into that though. But, um, okay. you know, I kind of want to talk about, you know, kind of the, uh, question that most fans um you know always want to know like well, why we haven't seen you like wh when and where could we have seen you so now one rumor that i did hear was the following season was rivals two. that was one that i heard that you and latoya were like either called to be together for or were alternates for and i yeah. also heard another one about the access two season could you maybe Talking about like which uh, you know seasons where you maybe alternates for or um, you know called for. Yeah, so um, for rivals, Latoya and I were both called. Latoya had some. Um, we both had it for Marie, at, who would have been our partner. Um, Marie did not want to do challenges at that time. She was kind of going through some stuff just because of all the backlash she got from our season right after it showed. Um, so she just wasn't, her head wasn't in it then. So that alternate season passed. And then X's two, 
Trey and I could have been that. And then there's, I mean, like I kissed Rob in St. Thomas, that could have been it. Jordan could have been it. So there's multiple options for that, but that's when they joined, they brought in the, are you the one people? And then, um, yeah, once they were in there, there's no chance because all those, are you the one people, it's nothing but relationships. So we really didn't have a fighting chance. It did stink that they brought in people that weren't from the original real world seasons. And then as well as like Nani and Johnny were on there from like flirting online or something like that. So it's, it stinks, but we were better for a little while. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, at least a lot of people I saw were disappointed to see. Did you guys go through the whole testing process and everything for that season mm-hmm. too? Trey mentioned uh, that as well. Yeah, we had to go to California, do all the tests, the drug tests. There's a written test that you have to do. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff that they pack in two days worth of a visit. And I mean, at least I got to go see people while I was in town, but that's about all that came out of it, unfortunately. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Um. But yeah, we just obviously, you know, talked about you guys not getting on. And I think what played a part in that was obviously they ended up casting um, Ari the One People. And that was the first season that you've done so. So now I'm going to kind of ask you, what are your thoughts on them pulling from other shows now? Like Ari the One, the UK, Big Brother. Yeah. I get it. They were probably sick of seeing all the same faces over and over. But at the same time, I hate it because a lot of those shows I think that there was a little bit more realness with the challenge before they all came on I feel like now they really just cast people just because they know oh we're gonna put this guy on because he's just gonna have a meltdown all the time because of who knows what or this girl she's gonna start fights with every single person possible just because she knows that's gonna get her more airtime. that's all it is is now it's what are they going to do for us just to get our ratings up instead of genuine personalities and more of the competition wise? Now it's just drama. <laughs> yeah. And it kind of seemed like when this whole thing started was always, you know, real world and road rules. And mm-hmm. that seemed like the, almost like an elite fraternity that you had to kind of go through, like in order to get onto the challenge. Like it was almost yeah. like, you know, it was kind of like a graduating process. Like you graduate and you do your uh, your real world and then you get on the challenge. And that kind of seemed like everybody, um, you know, had a passion for. And now um, I'm not saying that like the new people that they're casting, you know, don't care about, you know, the challenge or whatever. But I'd say, you know, in some people's cases, like, you know, the UK guy, Bear, like, I'm sorry. Uh, but I, think, I think that he's solely... I think he's solely there for a paycheck and like, I don't think he necessarily is there with the mindset of, uh, you know, winning. Whereas like, I feel like if you take the people from the real world or road rules, they're a lot hungrier. And I know fans on Twitter, um, a lot lately have, uh, expressed their, um, you know, at, like <laughs> appreciation for what was once. Yeah. Yeah, and kind of have been vocal about wanting that back. So I think, uh, you know, do you feel as though if they brought back, you know, I'm not saying start up the real world again into what it was, but say, for example, they started, like, pulling from past seasons, like, of the show that were featured on Battle of the Seasons or, you know, seasons like that. Do you think that would be a good idea on their part? I think it would. I think a lot of the people that are on right now even if they are from real world they've been on for season after season after season I think that even if you go back and pull from old real world seasons or old challenge seasons it would give people a reason to want to watch that season all over again so say if they pulled well Leroy hasn't been in in a while so say if they pull Leroy well somebody might want to be like Oh, how did Re- Leroy's season start? Okay, well, go back and watch Vegas. And that they'd be able to air all these shows again and get those talking again, and who knows what could come out of all of that. But I think that instead, keeping it from where it originally came from is a better idea than going out to different shows 
and going out to different networks because I'm pretty sure that Big Brother is not from Bonham Murray and they're just kind of crossing lines there. Just keep it, keep it where it's from. If it's not broke, don't change it. <laughs> don't fix it. Yeah, it, it surely wasn't broke. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. But you obviously mentioned about still watching. What are what are maybe your thoughts? You know, I know you didn't do a I'll ask you like kind of a rapid fire here, kind of maybe a two and one type thing. Maybe what are your thoughts on um, you know, the current season? with the whole Red Skull uh, elimination twist. And um, what about, I mean, I know you didn't do a show with Johnny, but maybe what are your thoughts on him and Wes working together as well? Okay, so the whole Red Skull thing. So I actually hadn't watched the last few seasons. just because little kids, no time. And then um, I watched the current season, oh shoot, probably a month and a half ago. I just figured, eh, I'll do it after everybody goes to bed. And then that can be my, like, little me time um i love the red school idea i think that it would have been better if they would have said okay you have two red schools if you go back in and you lose you can lose that skull to a person but you don't lose yours i think that would have kind of been cool and then it could be chaired but then i could also see that being turned around and saying i want to make sure that my buddy gets to the final i have two of them i might as well let them have one of them and just make it an easy win for them. And then they both go to the finals. I don't know. I think it could have played out very interesting. Um, yeah. Um, the concept I thought was um, unique, but I think that there's definitely um, tweaks that they can make to it in order mm -hmm. to, um, you know, better the overall, like, sense of urgency and competition, because you see people kind of get complacent once they have their skull, and yeah. um, we saw towards the end of, um, you know, at least how it kind of played out was once people had their skull, you had people kind of throwing uh, daily challenges because they don't really have incentive to win, and they know that, like, you know, they're already set and going to the final, when it's like, this isn't kind of what the challenge, you know, always was, you know what I mean? Like, it takes away from the whole politics aspect of, you know, kind of having a campaign and actually try to win so you don't have to go into elimination. So I think maybe that if TJ or whoever um, maybe said in the beginning, like, going and getting a red skull is important in this game, but, like, without actually saying, like, how it's going to play out later down the line and then maybe towards the end reveal, yeah, like, oh, whoever went in and got their skull, like, you know, you're – eligible to run the final whoever didn't well you know you're going home yeah yeah I think that would have been neat um I don't know I do like the fact that it made people actually want to compete I mean that's what they're there for in the first place but normally people hide from an elimination and they were trying to go in like, I wish that it was more like that like you actually wanted to try and show what you can do instead of just hiding behind somebody and just kind of making your way there easily and not doing anything like Ashley Mitchell you should have she should have never won a single challenge she's not good at competitions puzzles is the only thing she's good at but really she coasted by the whole entire time and if they can do anything to keep people from doing that I mean I'm all for it so mm. What are your thoughts on Bananas and uh, Wes, you know, kind of coexisting for the first time? I like it. I think that it's long overdue. I think it's a rivalry that made sense when they were younger. But once you kind of grow up and become an adult, you are able to get along with people. <laughs> um, I think they didn't play it out very well because people caught on very quickly, like Nani. And... Uh, I don't know. I think if they would have kept it in the shadows a little bit longer, it would have worked out better for them. Mm, yeah, I, I agree. What about, um, you know, your thoughts on some of the newer ladies on the, you know, show? Obviously, you talk about Ashley, but like besides Ashley, what are your thoughts on maybe Jenny, who just won the season? Okay, hang on, let me try and fix this real quick. Gotcha. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, it looked really dark on my screen. Um, Jenny, I think Jenny is a badass and she deserved that win a hundred percent. Um, there are 
quite a few females that I don't think really should. They're only cast there for their drama and they're not, they're not athletic. They're not very competitive. And I, I don't know. I hate to see that because it's kind of, Jenny deserved her win. She was awesome, but she also didn't have very much competition. Like, yeah. Um, I think Casey, even though she is not from real world, <laughs> I think she did really well as well. Um, I think Bailey just kind of coasted by to get there. I don't think that she deserved to be in the final. Same with Melissa. Um, I don't know. I just think it's, there's just a lot of coasting going on. <laughs> I think yeah. for males, Fessy, I was, there have been so many challenges where the guys, the big guys do so well all season and they get to a final and they just completely gas out. And it's too bad that that happened to him because he was a monster. He was a beast during the challenges. And I think he would have done really well if they were not climbing up the mountain. <laughs> yeah, I really wanted to see Corey win. Did you? That was that was who I was rooting for, yeah. Okay. I was Team Fessy. Um, I, I do... I did like the Bananas one and kind of... I know he wanted to redeem himself. I don't think he needed to. I think that the steal from Sarah, I think that was a great move. And I think that even production was hoping somebody would do that. Otherwise, they wouldn't have planted that seed. And I don't think he has anything to be sorry about for that at all. No, honestly, it's one of those things like uh, where where it happened when I'm younger, I kind of um, salty about, but now, you know, seeing things from a different perspective now, I honestly don't have a problem with it. And I might, you know, people watching this might get mad at me for saying that, but honestly, like it is what it is. I, it really doesn't affect, you know, any of my uh, viewpoints on him you know, at this point. I think if it was a different theme, people would have hated it even more, but the fact that it was rivals, yes, your team, but your rivals at the same time, even if you built a little bit of friendship, that's what the theme was. And I think it was the best ending to that season. Yeah. But now we talked about the money. How familiar were you with, or, or are you with how Ashley stole the money a few seasons after that? I, you know, I don't, I'm, I didn't see him. I just know that she won and I could not believe that she won a season, let alone two of them. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, they did a twist. Um, she stole the money uh, from her partner. It was a season. It was another paired season, similar to how Bananas and uh, Sarah was, but um, okay. she she ended up stealing the money as well. Okay, huh? Yeah. I mean, props to her, but the fact that she made it that far in the first place. <laughs> I'm just yeah, not a fan I, of her. I think it's very annoying. Wow. <laughs> It looks like you might have another rival partner if you ever get back on the show. Uh, uh, you know, if they were going to pair me with her, I would hope not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was going to ask, though, um, you know, if ever given the opportunity, obviously, you know, you've got a kid and, you know, stuff now. But would you, mm -hmm. you know, be open to the uh, opportunity? Depending on when it was. I don't know. See, that's so hard because I have two little ones. I've got a four-year-old and a one-year-old. And that's difficult because leaving them would be so extremely hard. Um, and then we want to try for number three soon. So, you know, if they were older, it might make sense. But with little ones so tiny, not, not really right now. <laughs> Yeah, it is uh, definitely um, a little um, time consuming and, uh, you know, with the whole challenges and stuff, you kind of just can't up and leave for like, however, like, I mean, if you go the distance, you'll be there for what, six weeks at least? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Six weeks and up to maybe eight, depending on how long it all takes. Mm. Down he's home. <laughs> <laughs> But um, what are some uh, maybe cast members that from your real world season that you still keep in contact with? Yeah, so I, when I got married, I had 
Bob Swift and LaToya that came to my wedding. Marie could make it and Trey was not invited. <laughs> and uh, so now <laughs> Rob is actually getting married soon. And so my, at our wedding, Rob and my husband, husband became two peas in a pod. They're best friends and they, talk, they text each other all the time. So we're going to Rob's wedding. And then Swift, I don't, I talk to him occasionally, but not very often. Bring in Toya. I talk to Toya pretty often. We snap each other videos and pictures of our kids and whatnot. Um, Trey, I don't really keep in contact with other than <laughs> for Rob's wedding, I reached out to who was going. So be or be Toya, Swift, and Trey. And I said, hey, guys. You want to just get an Airbnb and we can all stay together? And I thought, I thought that'd be fun. Apparently, Trey thinks that's too awkward to stay in the house with my uh, husband. But, uh, I mean, it's eight so you got to get over it at some point. <laughs> I thought it would. Yeah, I, um, you know, I actually spoke with uh, Rob uh, recently. We've been actually going to have something planned. You know, obviously, he's got a lot going on. But in the future, um, I'm looking forward to having him on here as well. And, um, you know. If you ever want to throw in a word to uh, Swift and get him on here too, I'd appreciate it. But um, okay. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> yeah, but um, I appreciate you taking the time to do this, and I look forward to uh, putting this out there. And it was, uh, you know, maybe fun for you to go on a little bit of a memory lane. Oh yeah, thank you so much. This was fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, take care and stay safe. All right, thanks. You too, Mike. Bye bye. Bye.